whenever we have amino acids coming together and forming a bond, that bond is referred to as our peptide bond. Now the peptide bond is created between a carboxyl end of one amino acid and the um, amino end of the other amino acid. So essentially over here we can see we are, have our first amino acid with our R group and then we have our second amino acid with its R group. Now here we can see that this carbon used to be a carboxyl, it lost its oxygen, and this nitrogen used to be the amino terminal and it lost two of its hydrogens. So essentially we've lost a water molecule because we've lost a oxygen and we lost two hydrogens, so water is released. So that means that whenever we see peptide bond formation, we know that it is some sort of a condensation reaction because water is released. So we see this bond form between the carboxyl and the amino end of two amino acids and we get this peptide bond. It's important to note the configuration of this bond because we see that this oxygen points up and this hydrogen points down. This is trans configuration and it is important to draw correctly because whenever we see a peptide bond formation, this is exactly how it should be illustrated. Now, what's important to note is that these electrons over here between carbon and oxygen, they are not localized to between the two. They are actually delocalized and we can actually and draw this out where we can say that we've got carbon which has its oxygen and we have nitrogen and nitrogen has a partial positive oxygen has a partial negative and we have a delocalization of electrons now since these electrons are delocalized that means that we can actually form a double bond over here or we could form the double bond over here so if we form the double bond over here that means that this double bond is going to be sp2 hybridized. So this carbon is going to be sp2 hybridized because we know that carbon is forming bonds with three different atoms and that's sp2. We also know that sp2 refers to the bond being planar. So that means that this peptide bond is actually a planar bond. We also know that a planar bond, since it's planar sp2 hybridized, it's going to restrict rotation. So we will actually not see rotation about this peptide bond, but we will see rotation about the alpha carbons. So the, over here and over here, we will see rotation, but not over here because of that dub partial double bond character between carbon and nitrogen, which form our peptide bond. So essentially, the peptide bond has a uh, partial double bond character, and it restricts the rotation. And in this diagram, we can actually see the restriction of rotation depicted in the blue boxes. So in our blue boxes, we can see the peptide bonds, and these peptide bonds are not free to move, whereas the alpha carbon uh, is free to rotate. Now, uh, we can... Uh, and also in this diagram, we can just make note that these electrons are also able to go down here and form a double bond with the nitrogen. And that is essentially peptide, uh, the peptide bond between amino acids. What's important to remember is this trans configuration that water is released, so it's a condensation reaction. The electrons are delocalized uh, between the oxygen and the nitrogen which gives uh, the peptide bond a partial double bond character. Now these partial positive and partial negative charges are going to be important later on when we discuss secondary structures of proteins. And that is essentially peptide bonds.